In today's video, we're going over some interesting new Blender add-ons that probably went under your radar, from modeling, texturing, motion tracking, geometry node add-ons, and more. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. We're gonna start with True Depth, the AI-powered add-on that turns depth maps into 3D meshes, which got a new fresh update. If you're into cleanup workflows or prepping stuff for 3D printing, I think it is worth looking at. There is now an add base button, which lets you slap a flat, solid bottom into your mesh, which is handy if you want your model to actually sit on a built slate. You can tweak the base size right in the UI, and there is an end cap toggle too, if you need to close off the top. They also add a support for PNGs with alpha, which means it now ignores transparent parts automatically when generating geometry. This is super useful for cutting out clean silhouettes from your depth maps. To help with cleanup, there is also a new boolean geometry removal option. So basically, you can subtract stray pieces or any random junk from the mesh with way less hassle. And if you are chasing more detail, you can now choose between small, medium and large AI model sizes, and bigger models give you better details, though they may take a little bit longer to process. Also from CG Matter, we have a new add-on called UV+ which makes UV unwrapping procedural and non-destructive. So, instead of manually setting seams and hitting unwrap over and over, you just add a modifier. It handles everything live, edge angles, projections, packing, and other stuff, and updates the unwrap as you tweak the settings. It works with meshes, curves, and text, including objects that usually need extra steps to unwrap cleanly. Since it overrides the default unwrap attribute, Materials pick up automatically, without baking or setup. If you want to finalize the UVs and edit them by hand, you just apply the modifier. Otherwise, it stays flexible and updates in real time. There is also a built-in viewer with stats like island count and UV space usage, which helps test different methods quickly. Next, we're going to talk about GeoBridge, which is a procedural blender tool that creates modern bridges with geometry nodes so no modeling needed. It offers six bridge styles like suspension, cable stayed, truss, and bailey bridges, each with its own blend file. Just draw a curve for your bridge length, apply the node setup, and tweak as needed. It is worth noting that the devs use ambient CG textures, which they provided to make this possible. The curve controls the shape, letting you bend or arc the bridge, and you can adjust the road's width from pedestrian paths to multi-lane roads. Customization panels let you control lanes, dividers, towers, cables, railings, lights, and roadside cones, with options like cable sag and carriageway type, but no traffic models included though, and signs are set up for right-hand driving only. Next is the newly updated 5000 PBR Asset Browser from Cantextures, now at version 3, not just updating the content, but also drastically reducing their prices, definitely making what can be considered the largest PBR materials library accessible to all of us artists, whether you are a beginner or a professional. Generally speaking, materials are neatly organized, and each material includes the usual maps, from base color to displacement, in addition to many featuring metallic and opacity, all in 2K resolution for both EV and cycles. On top of dropping the price, the big news is that there is now a free 1000 plus PBR materials pack available on Gumroad, making this library affordable while continuing to support Blender growth through donations, which is a great thing. Next, we're going to talk about Lighting Effects, which is a procedural system for adding lighting effects in Blender. It works through geometry nodes, and it comes with a library of templates that you can drag from the asset browser. Each one stacks modifiers like lightning, sparks, smoke, and materials, making it possible to adjust without rebuilding anything from the ground up. You can actually control where the lightning strikes and tweak its shape and glow, and use proximity settings to make it react to nearby geometry. The effects support both static and animated meshes, and there is a fake motion blur trick for sparks that doesn't rely on render time blur by affecting their velocity. Now let's talk about AC Track Tools. This add-on makes creating roads and racetracks in Blender way easier. 
You will start by drawing curves to define your road's path, then adjust the width, smoothness, and whether the road follows the terrain or stays flat. It automatically adds detail by subdividing terrain near the road and cleans up geometry further away, keeping your scene efficient. And from what I can see, you can actually quickly add guardrails and posts with adjustable spacing and height, which can be aligned even if you tweak the road later. Lane markings use vertex groups for easy control over width, dash length, and materials. Beyond that, there are features for scattering trees with collision avoidance and customizable wall blocks following curves, in addition to options to split meshes for export. To keep things organized, you can take a look at Local Asset Manager, which is a free Blender add-on, which simplifies managing large asset libraries. Unlike Blender's default asset browser, it works directly without your existing folder structures, so there is no need to manually mark or prepare assets. You just add folders containing blend files, categorized as objects, materials, SDRIs, or effects, and access everything easily within Blender. The add-on includes an SDRI adjuster that lets you modify lighting settings and brightness right from the interface, saving you time by avoiding the need to switch to world settings. It also features a fast global search across all assets, visual thumbnails matched by file names, and support geometry nodes and materials, with over a hundred free professional assets available after creating a free iMesh account and frequent updates inside Blender. And generally, this will offer a practical, efficient solution for Arcvis professionals and anyone looking for better asset control. If you do a lot of low-poly hard surface modeling, Arbitrary Align might be a more useful tool for you compared to Blender built-in tools. It is a modeling toolkit that adds a custom snap system and reference planes, making alignment and projection feel precise instead of guessing. One of the features you will probably use a lot is Quick Match. While holding G, R, or S, you can track between two points to define an axis for moving, rotating, or scaling. It is a fast way to stay accurate without interrupting your flow with extra menus or operations. From there, reference planes let you define temporary grid spaces from any geometry. You can project objects onto them, snap vertices cleanly, or mirror geometry. Generally speaking, they are flexible and don't lock you into a grid setup. You also get proxy points for defining temporary pivots, which comes in handy for grouped adjustments. Used together, these tools make alignment for cleanup masks feel less like a chore and more like part of the flow. Next, we're going to talk about Easy Organizer. You see, if you work with complex or imported Blender scenes, this add-on can help you cut down on clutter. It automatically sorts objects into collections based on their types, whether they are meshes, lights, cameras, and so on. It also cleans up empty collections and offers quick buttons to select objects by type, saving you time navigating the outliner. The add-on keeps parent and child relationship intact when grouping, so hierarchies stay organized within collections. It also lets you collapse all collections in the outliner with one click, making the view cleaner. You can customize which object type gets sorted and which appear as quick sections buttons. The panel supports icon only, text only, or combined button styles. And if you are new to lighting, or you want to save some time. Viewport Scopes adds real-time color analysis tools directly into Blender's 3D viewport. It brings a live histogram and vector scope overlay to help you monitor color, lighting, and composition as you work. You can toggle these scopes on and off with a new button in the viewport header. By pressing Shift, you enter an overlay editing mode that lets you reposition and resize the scopes freely. A drop-down menu provides options to customize with color channels, like histogram displays, to control scope placement and scale precisely. The add-on also supports sending viewport color data directly in the image editor as a live buffer image. This means you can use Blender's native scopes in the image editor with real-time updates, including composition node adjustments. It even works alongside the compositor, so changes are reflected immediately in the viewport scopes. Even though it is in development, it runs well, even on low-end machines. Last but not least, we're going to talk about Motion Camera. 
which is an add-on that adds procedural camera motion effects to Blender, letting you add shake, orbits, tracking, and dolly zooms without manual keyframing. It updates automatically every frame, so you can see changes live as you tweak settings. You can choose from 7 camera shake presets like stable, phone, or car chase, and adjust translation, rotation, amplitude, and speed on each axis. For smoother moves, the orbit feature lets the camera circle around any object with customizable radius and height while automatically tracking the target. The zoom effect adds dynamic focus changes along orbiting. The third-person follow mode tracks an object's position with adjustable smoothness and offsets, usually for game style or chase shots. Advanced tracking gives control over position offsets, damping, and axis selection. The dolly zoom recreates classic hitchhock effect with simple sliders for focal length and movement distance. While ready, you can bake procedural motions into keyframes for easier sharing or rendering. And there you have it guys. If you are interested in these add-ons, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, let's give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.